Hello, my name's Keith Lawton, Technical Training Manager at Live Action. I'll be taking you through this short tutorial on LiveNX data management. Understanding how LiveNX manages data can help you achieve greater success and higher performance when performing many tasks in LiveNX. At the end of this tutorial, you will be able to describe the data store architecture of LiveNX, explain the differences between each of the data stores, list the factors that affect data store size, compare the impact that reporting parameters have on using each data store, and construct a data retention plan to match your business objectives. You will also be able to design the LiveNX system to accommodate the data management needs of your business. LiveNX is relied on to generate a wide variety of network activity and operational reports, dashboards, and topology views. To achieve this, LiveNX must quickly and seamlessly process and integrate data generated in the network to provide visualizations of the network, the paths, protocols, and volumes of traffic that traverse it. Keeping this reporting and visualization running with high performance is at the heart of the data management story of LiveNX. When we review the LiveNX architecture, we see the flow of utilization and status data coming from network devices to the LiveNX server. This data is comprised of a variety of different formats, including standard and proprietary network flow protocols, standard SNMP information on statistics and status, and bidirectional forwarding detection data, or BFD, for SD-WAN. Let's go a little deeper into the variety of data formats that we're dealing with. Here you can see the data structure for standard flow information on the left, standard V2 SNMP, and BFD data that's used in SD-WAN. Each of these data structures has a very different format, length, and data set. Additionally, the volume of information that is created with each of these data types is very different. Live Action responded to this challenge and decided to manage the collection and processing of this data with separate data stores, each adapted to its purpose. Performance is at the heart of what we do. As each of these different data flows arrive at the LiveNX server or collector, they're captured and stored to their appropriate data store. As mentioned earlier, each of the data types has a very different density, and this approximate ratio and database sizing can be seen here. Each of these data stores can be managed to keep data for a longer or shorter amount of time, or to keep the data stores to a defined size. We'll discuss the implications of that a little later. Let's look at some of the detail here, starting with raw flow store. And let's remember, the numbers I will show you are comparative. Your network can and probably will be different, but it should follow this trend. The raw flow store keeps all the NetFlow data, both standard and proprietary, reported by the network devices. The reporting interval of NetFlow is approximately one minute and is the most granular view that we can work with of flow data. This means that all traffic within each minute is reported to the LiveNX server by the network devices for each flow. Any reporting or dashboard data required at the smallest granularity levels will be drawn from the raw flow store. Remember this for later. It's important to understand. The long-term flow store takes the same incoming flow data but aggregates it into larger bins. Typically, each data point or bin in the long-term flow store sums five bins from the raw flow store. As the bins cover a longer period of time, there are less of them, and this makes it the obvious choice to use when running reports or creating dashboards where you want to cover a lot of ground. Starting searches that cover wide time ranges is ideal for the long-term flow store, as a much smaller amount of data will be involved. Once you have identified the points in time that you want to drill down into, you can easily move to more detailed reports using smaller bins in the raw flow store. The SNMP store will be amongst your smallest in terms of data volume. In general, the data returned from SNMP polling is much less dense as it is usually OID values and does not include source, destination, application, or QoS information that is normal for flow data. The last store we're going to look at here is the influx store. The influx store is used for three main purposes that allow the overall system operation to maintain its focus on performance. Firstly, it is the store for all of the bidirectional forwarding data, or BFD, generated from Cisco SD-WAN deployments. The amount of data generated by Cisco SD-WAN will depend on the number of tunnels in the design. In general, more mesh equals more BFD data. 
The second function of the influx store is for holding data used by some of the most popular flow reports. Think of this as a pre-processing store for these reports. By pre-processing the key flow reports, we again boost the performance of LiveNX and your operations team. The final role of the influx store is for rolled up aggregations of flow data. With the raw flow store holding the most granular data of one minute and the long-term store aggregating and holding bins of five minutes, the influx store again aggregates and holds bins of greater than one hour, extending up to one day. For context, a one-day bin aggregates 1,440 one-minute bins. Here is a quick comparison of the raw flow store and the long-term flow store. In tangible terms, the bin size is the real difference. This is a result of the aggregation that takes place, which happens on the fly. Both of these stores are populated simultaneously. Having bins that aggregate data over a longer time, five minutes versus one minute, speeds up searches that cover a wide amount of data. Think of this as you would search through all of the photographs on your phone, looking for that one. You don't need to load each photo in all of its glorious resolution as you scan and scour through your folders. You need to get an outline, enough differentiation that you can identify what you're looking for, and then bring up the detail. For this reason, using the larger buckets to begin searches is your recommended strategy. You'll end up with faster searches by only working through one-fifth of the data. Then, as you identify items to drill down on, you can shorten the time range and get more granular. I mentioned earlier the Influx store has three roles, with SD-WAN BFD data being the first. I wanted to share a little more detail on the other aspects of its role. There are seven key flow reports that Influx store holds. Application, Application DSCP Audit, DSCP, Bandwidth Utilization and Bandwidth Summary, and Interface Bandwidth and Interface Bandwidth Summary. Just so you know, you'll be running data from the Influx store when you use those reports. The bin durations that roll into the Influx store are also shown here. This means any report that you run with longer bin durations of one hour, six hours, or one day will use the Influx store. Now we have an idea about the different data stores and what they're used for, let's spend a few minutes and look at what makes the sizes of those data stores so variable. As I mentioned earlier, the ratios between the data stores can and probably will be different from what you see here, and there are many variables that go to make this difference happen. For SNMP, the variables are what you poll for, across how many devices, and how frequently. With Flow, there gets to be a much larger array of parameters that can impact how large and how fast a data store can grow. Understanding what you ask of your system and how you set it up will allow you to engineer the disk space accordingly. The first parameter that you don't get a lot of choice about is the number of devices in your network. NetFlow traffic is generally reported every minute. In addition, the more interfaces you're monitoring, the more flow information you'll gather. Finally, the additional technology feature sets that you wish to use will increase the amount of data. For monitoring AVC and Cisco voice video statistics can add more than 10% to your data volumes. It's important to be aware of this and make sure you've included this volume into your system specification. Long-term flow store will approximately grow to be 20% the size of the raw flow store. Remember that long-term flow store aggregates the one minute bins of the raw store to a five minute bin. The biggest impact on the influx store will be the number of SD-WAN tunnels in the network. With more tunnels, especially from a meshed network, the variability of the influx store size will be greater. Now we've looked at the data management environment and understand more about the different data stores, let's look at how this makes for a better reporting experience. After all, the reports are a big part of using LiveNX. The key concept to keep in mind here is the bin size, but this must be looked at in conjunction with the report time range. When configuring your reports, aside from the data you're looking for, of course, there are two dimensions that will affect your performance or how long it takes to run the report. When covering longer time ranges, you're asking to search through more data. Similarly, when you ask to search with a finer granularity or bin duration, you're again looking through more data. You can greatly increase the amount of data to look through when setting both a wide range and a fine granularity. 
So what are the options involved in time range and bin duration? On the left of the report configuration page, there's a drop down menu that you can use to select the time range. You can select increments from the last 15 minutes, last hour, day, week, or to the last 30 days. And finally, the chance to customize your own time range. You also have smart options of today, yesterday, and previous week. The bin duration, found on the right of the report configuration page, has just three options. One minute, which forces the report to use the raw flow store. Five minute, which forces the report to the long-term flow store. And auto, in which LiveNX will choose the most appropriate store given the time range. There will be an indication of the bin duration used under the drop-down bar, seen here on the right. You will also be shown a tooltip regarding which data store is being used. A rule of thumb when working out which store you want to use is shown here. If auto bin duration is selected, then your time range will determine which store to use, with durations of 15 minutes sending the search to raw flow store and one hour or greater moving you to the long term store. Anytime a bin duration of one minute is selected, you'll be using the raw flow store regardless of the time range. Selecting five minutes will default you to the long term store again regardless of the time range. As data is collected and the different data stores are filled, it's easy to see that large amounts of disk space will be consumed. One way of managing this disk consumption is to set a data retention policy. Some of the considerations on what your data retention policy should look like are, you can't look at what you don't have. Simply put, how far back will you need to go to investigate incidents on your network or perform capacity planning baselines? Your business KPIs will help on this determination. What amount of data can you expect to be generated in that time frame? We'll look at that in a moment too. You'll need to configure your system to accommodate the capacity that you expect. Although you can add additional disk space, you'll want to size your system with good knowledge from the outset. The retention policy rules are available for each data store, with the influx data store following the settings of the long-term data store. There are three main parameters that can be set regarding data retention. The first is alerting when a database reaches a set size. This is default on and set to 500 gigabytes. Second is the ability to purge data older than a specific amount of time. Again, the default is on and 10 days is set for the QoS, flow and alert databases with 365 days for the long-term database. You'll need to be aware of these defaults and set them according to your data retention policy. You can also back up data to a specific location before it is purged. It's recommended that you review these settings after determining your data retention policy. One final item on data stores concerns the alert stores. Currently, there is a different store for the web UI and the engineering console. The sizing of these stores will depend on the number of alerts generated in your network. Suffice to say, the size of them is measured in megabytes and not in gigabytes. The impact on your data management should be very small. The Web UI Alerts database is broken down into different sections for dashboards, notifications, or entity pages. Each section can be managed with its own retention policy, providing greater flexibility. You will find the Web UI Data Store page under the System Settings Data Store Management. To help with disk sizing, we've produced a high-level estimator to get you on the way to specifying your system. These numbers should be viewed as a guide as I mentioned before. Your network and the traffic it generates will surely be different. But these initial estimates should get you on the right path. Congratulations, you've completed this module on LiveNX data management.